This video will discuss the microwave spectra of rotating diatomic molecules in the rigid rotor model. So we have our rigid rotor model system, as we've had for the previous few videos. We have two atoms of mass 1 and mass 2 at a fixed bond length r. They have a reduced mass, which is mass 1 times mass 2, divided by mass 1 plus mass 2. The moment of inertia, resistance to angular acceleration of this system, is mu r squared. The rotational constant of this molecule is Planck's constant, divided by 8 pi squared times moment of inertia. And b bar, the rotational constant in units of wave numbers, inverse centimeters, instead of in hertz, like b is, is b over c, h over 8 pi squared c times i, c being the speed of light in centimeters per second. Okay, so from the previous video, we saw that our rigid rotor energy levels depend on a quantum number, j. You might also see it as l. I'm going to use j mostly in this chapter. e sub j equals h bar squared over 2 times the moment of inertia times j times j plus 1. This equals h times b times j times j plus 1 in terms of the rotational constant. Also equals hc times b bar times j times j plus 1, the rotational constant in wave numbers. All right, so those are our energy levels. We have them plotted over there, e over hc b bar going up quadratically as we go from j equals 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. Degeneracy of each level is 2j plus 1, 1 level at j equals 0, 3 at j equals 1, 5, 7, 9, etc. All right, so we're interested in what happens when this system is hit with a photon of light, which is the exact difference between two energy levels, and we get a quantum jump between those two energy levels. So for absorption, we are hit by a photon, we absorb its energy, and we increase an energy level. For emission, we're at an energy level, and we jump down on energy level and release a photon of that energy. So absorption going up or emission going down. So the selection rule, the rule that tells us how the quantum number j is allowed to change when we absorb a photon, delta j is equal to plus or minus 1 plus 1 for absorption, minus 1 for emission. All right, so the change in energy is going to be the energy of the photon that we absorb. So the change in energy, delta E, is going to be E of J plus 1 minus E of J. That will be HCB bar times J plus 1 times J plus 2 for J plus 1, minus J times J plus 1 for E sub J. All right, so we can FOIL these out, multiply those out. Delta E equals HCB bar, J squared plus 3J plus 2, that polynomial, minus J squared plus J, that polynomial, so minus J squared minus J. The J squareds cancel. 3J minus J is 2J. 2 is 2. Factor out a 2. Delta E equals 2 HCB bar times j plus 1. All right, so that's the energy in terms of uh, joules if we're using SI units here. So delta E is equal to h nu. It's equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon that we absorb or emit during this jump. So that's equal to hc over lambda, the wavelength of it, which is equal to hc omega bar. So it's equal to hc times the inverse wavelength of the photon the observed inverse wavelength of the photon that we absorb. So this is convenient because this inverse wavelength is in units of wave numbers. This rotational constant is in units of wave numbers. There's an HC here, and there's an HC there. So this is the real reason that spectroscopists like this value B bar, is because this Planck's constant times speed of light ends up canceling out when we do these equations here. So when we set this equal to this, what we have is that the inverse wavelength of our photon that we absorb is 2b bar times j plus 1. So if we're going from j equals 0 to j equals 1, our energy is 2b bar, of, or our wavelength of that photon is 2b bar. 
from j equals 1 to j equals 2, it's 4 b bar. j equals 2 to j equals 3, 6 b bar. And the pattern continues on from there. So what that gives us is a spectrum where every 2 b bar we have another peak. So we have the jump from 0 to 1, 2 hc b bar. Jump from 1 to 2, 4 hc b bar. 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, etc. As, as long as you have energy levels to excite. Uh, the value of this B bar is typically on the order of 1 to 10 wave numbers for fairly light atoms in this diatomic. As you get heavier, this number will go below 1, might be 0 0.1, 0 0.01, but the point is that the value of this B bar is typically in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So the spectrum that we get out of all these different energy jumps between energy levels in the rigid rotor with this selection rule of delta J equals plus or minus one gives us this nice spectrum of evenly spaced bars which are falling in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum.